Hey folks, uh, despite the Iron Maiden shirt that uh, I'm sporting today, we are doing my top 10 female uh, musicians, artists, singers, composers, uh, anything within that framework, but the common denominator is that these are all women. This is a response for Glenn Calloway. Glenn has been uh, nothing but kind and supportive to me in my efforts here on this channel and uh, really gave me a leg up in getting back and uh, creating videos and content again. So uh, before anything, we go any further, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and uh, please, it really does help me a lot if you give a, a thumbs up on the video. Uh, it helps YouTube with the algorithms and uh, this channel, this uh, video gets recommended. So top 10 females, I'm not putting them in order. I, there is a couple of overlap artists between myself and Glenn, but I mean, you can go anywhere with this. I also, see, Blondie didn't make the list, but I thought, you know, what are you going to do? Blondie's up there. Um, the Pretenders, uh, Chrissy Hine did not make the list. The uh, Wilson sisters, Anne and Nancy from Heart, would have loved them. Stevie Nicks um, uh, is wonderful. Christine McVie, Christine McVie. So, so many great female artists out there and uh, I could only choose a few. Canada's a little snowbird. Anne Murray, she's not included here. I know it's it's almost a crime to just narrow things down to 10. So the list could change. Seldom does my number one change and I'll show you who my number one is here in this list. Thumbnail gives you a little hint pretty big hint about what you're going to see here, but at least you know what you're getting in for when you jump on it. So without further ado, my top 10 in no particular order because I, it's just a very difficult thing. I think I could go right away and say that if I was to choose a single artist with one of the most beautiful vocals I've ever heard, just an absolutely beautiful, haunting, uh, absolutely moving, emotive vocal. It belongs to a young lady named Emily Braun. Uh, she's from uh, Denmark, I believe, uh, but she's got a music project that she calls Mere Cure. And she does uh, what I believe, now you can tell me metal people if she's a uh, black metal or death metal. Might It's one of those, but it's that very Nordic sounding thing. Now, this is an album called Folk Sange. I've showed it frequently. And one of my viewers on the old channel, and I'm so sorry because we've lost contact. See, when I lost the old channel, not only did um, I lose um, connection to you, but or you lost con connection to me, but I lost connection to uh, people that used to watch the show. So if you're out there, you happen to stumble across this, maybe you see um, the picture of Emily in the thumbnail. Uh, she is just incredible, and this album is so haunting. And my friend Eric, Plastic Soundwave Cult, did a, an amazing video, a rundown on The House Carpenter. This is a song covered by uh, Joan Baez, another great female artist that could have been included but didn't make the grade here, at least at this time. But uh, we're going to start things off. Emily Braun, Mirkir. This is the album Folk Sanj. I highly Highly recommend this. It's a Celtic tinge stuff. A lot of the language is in um, Emily's native Danish. Uh, so certainly I don't understand the vocalizings. I do with The House Carpenter, of course. It's a, a song sung in English, beautifully rendered, absolutely stunningly, sonically beautiful. Emily Braun, Mere Cure, number one, or number 10, I guess. We'll put that down as number 10. Coming up next, I'm going to talk about this lady. This is one of my absolute favorites. Um, her name is Emmy Lou Harris. And this is, I believe, her third album called Pieces of the Sky. Pieces of the Sky, indeed. And uh, this has got one absolutely memorable song, absolutely haunting. It's called Boulder to Birmingham. Uh, Boulder to Birmingham was covered by the Hollies. Oh, interesting. I think far less effectively than uh, Emmy Lou was able to do it uh, because of her connection. It's a song about uh, Graham Parsons, uh, the late uh, singer, songwriter, 
uh, influence her on the birds. Vinyl Richie says, Graham Parsons ruined the, bir bir uh, the birds because it took him into a country direction. Uh, he also influenced the Rolling Stones, helping the Rolling Stones go into a country direction uh, with songs like Wild Horses, which uh, Graham helped uh, work on that song. Um, this is a beautiful album. I've got a number. I've got about 14 or 15 Amy Lou Harris albums in my collection. Uh, Wrecking Ball with Daniel Lanois is a real standout. I just wanted to show this one. It's probably my favorite. Pieces of the Sky, but you can't go wrong with Emmy Lou Harris. Absolutely great background vocal. She's played with everybody. Bob Dylan, uh, she appears in the band The Last Waltz in a, a special, uh, specially shot segment that uh, Martin Scorsese put together. Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, Emmy Lou does appear in Glenn Calloway's top list as well. So, Emmy Lou, we love Emmy Lou. All right, well, who else do we have? This uh, into, I, I love this lady. Um, this is my, this speaks to my fondness for Celtic music. Again, Mirkir coming in, Emily Braun, but also uh, Enya. So Enya is just wonderful. This is her 1988 album called Watermark. So many beautiful songs. This is your original gangster Canadian pressing. This is what I owned once upon a time. So happy to get it back in. The Orinoco Flow was the big hit off this thing. The Caribbean Blue was also on here. Storms in Africa. And uh, when I got married, Sue and I actually had, as one of the warm-up pieces, we got the Beatles in there with John Lennon, um, true, uh, Real Love, and Paul McCartney's I Will. Who knows how long I've loved you. But uh, in warming uh, everything up was the Storms of Africa, a beautiful instrumental piece that appears here. Uh, possessed of beautiful vocal, Enya is um, class. I mean, she just radiates class. And I would, she's one I've not seen in concert. I would have loved to have seen Enya in concert. But uh, yeah, this is just wonderful. I've got a number of Enya albums in my collection. I know my friend Headley, we were talking about it on the live stream. Headley is another fat bearded man talking about records. Uh, that's, I'm not insulting. That's the name of his channel. Uh, he did a wonderful kind of send up on you. He has uh, what he describes as a love hate for Enya. But I really, I really enjoy her music and that Celtic thing. Of course, Lorena McKennett, the Canadian Celtic, again, similar. Uh, Lorena McKennett uh, also could have made this list. She didn't, but she could have, right? All right, let's uh, continue on Enya. So hopefully we'll pull a few of these uh, that you'll recognize. Next up is probably the most powerful vocalist on this whole thing. Absolutely fascinating individual. Uh, recently converted to Islam, if that is not your biggest clue. It's Sinead O'Connor. Uh, Sinead O'Connor. This is one I have on vinyl, but I've got a couple others. I've got a, a, a one album. It's a beautiful album where she's singing in Irish. And um, I've got the... Um, uh, you know, oh, I forget the name of it. Um, but the one, you know, the black one with Nothing Compares to You. Maybe the album was called that. But uh, I've got that on CD. But I wanted to show the, the vinyl here. This is The Lion and the Cobra. Sinead O'Connor, I have real compassion for this lady. She's been through a lot. Uh, she's been very forthcoming with her um, struggles with mental illness. Uh, just a beautiful, powerful voice. Controversial. Uh, and of course, the iconic, you know, shaving her head because she's really an attractive as a younger uh, woman with, the, you know, that flower of youth, very attractive. And she, she knew this and she chose to shave her hair just to help her be taken more seriously as an artist and not just as another uh, pretty face, right? A pretty face with a pretty voice. But uh, Sinead O'Connor, absolutely powerful, powerful performer. And the picture I chose for her, of her for the thumbnail, I think speaks to that power that she has. I'm a big fan, Sinead O'Connor. I've got a number of her albums in my collection, but this is her Lion and the Cobra. Uh, wonderful. And if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, but I think this was her debut. Let me know, Sinead fans, if I'm right about that. Okay. Next up, um, okay, we'll do this. This lady I got a chance to see in concert circa 1987 
for her Who's That Girl world tour. I saw her in the kingdom, the old kingdom in Seattle. It's the one and only Madonna. This is her debut. This is a first Canadian pressing. I just picked it up yesterday, spun it today. Beautiful sounding analog <laughs> recording. Just great. Here is Madonna on the uh, Sire label, that very familiar Sire label. So yeah, this is really good. It's got Borderline on it and uh, Lucky Star. Holiday is on here. And um, Everybody was another hit. So this was uh, really good. She really worked hard uh, to get this album out the way she wanted it. She actually fired a, a producer that worked on it first, got somebody else that uh, took over the project, which is never an easy thing to do. But the result was nothing short of fantastic. So Madonna and uh, uh, the, her self-titled debut. Also, before I go too far further, too much further, I have got Mariah Wesley up here. You know, because we're doing the top women in music, I want to show you one of the top female channels in the vinyl community. This is Maria Wesley. Uh, again, another lady who's been just so supportive of my channel and helping me out. And uh, if you go over there, Maria Wesley, I'll leave a link to her channel as well as Glenn's because you want to see Glenn's top 10 and all this as well. And speaking of Glenn, let's take on another artist that Glenn and I are both going to feature in this uh, discussion. None other than Canada's own Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell, this is Court and Spark. Uh, Free Man in Paris was on here. Um, Help Me, I Think I'm Falling in Love Again. Beautiful song. Joni Mitchell, so influential, so uh, inspirational. The late Christian artist uh, Keith Green in his autobiography uh, talked about taking, he was so struck by her music that he and a friend of his did a pilgrimage to her house in Laurel Canyon. Of course, Joni did the, uh, uh, the, the album Ladies of the Canyon, where she speaks about her life there in Southern California. But uh, this is just absolutely wonderful. It's on your Asylum Records label, this pressing. And um, it's got the, uh, the embossing. But Joni Mitchell, so influential. And a, a, a cousin of mine, a first cousin of mine, as it turns out, so a close cousin, uh, she uh, grew up in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And she uh, and Joni Mitchell and Buffy St. Marie were together behind an auditorium where um, Joni was going to perform. And uh, so the three ladies are there because she, she went to school with Joni Mitchell. Anyway, they're all having a cigarette. And suddenly the queen arrives, the queen of England arrives, a true story. Um, and uh, Buffy St. Marie's with her cigarette feels embarrassed having a smoke going with the royalty thing going. So she puts out her cigarette and with her bare foot. And uh, my cousin remembers uh, looking down, seeing Joni, uh, or not Joni, but Buffy St. Marie putting a cigarette out this way, cigarette to stamp it out. And the queen goes, oh my goodness, you're going to hurt your foot. And it was all at the back entrance because the idea was to get her majesty in without any uh, kerfuffle up front or anything. It was for some sort of centennial affair that uh, Queen Elizabeth was there. Anyway, crazy story, funny story. But Joni Mitchell, Canadian roots, uh, Sask uh, Saskatchewan proud. And I'd be remiss if I did not mention the Bobby Gass, our only, our one and only Bobby Gass, met Joni in the 60s, and he recalls uh, giving her some money, you know, in her guitar case as she was busking in Ontario, Toronto, Canada. And that's something. But Joni Mitchell, certainly a national treasure, and uh, we're happy to lend her to the United States, and uh, she has a great love for California. All right, let's uh, continue along. Oh, we're getting down there. Let's do this next group. This one, this is surprising. They're one of my favorite groups of all time. They are the Supremes, Florence Ballard. We've got Mary Wilson and, of course, Diana Ross, the one and only. The Supremes are the soundtrack of my life. They represent uh, the soundtrack to my life. My favorite song by them is a song called The Happening. It's a masterpiece uh, in, in writing and performance. The upbeat tempo, the uh, the happy, joyful, just 
uh, just oozes the joy of living and, and youth and life, and yet the lyrics are the exact opposite. It's a song of heartbreak, of, of a relationship falling apart, and yet the way these ladies sang it was so powerful and so positive. It's just mind-blowing. One of my favorites, but um, so many great songs that I go, Where Did Our Love Go?, um, baby love, uh, stop in the name of love. This is a, a greatest hits comp, but it's funny, ironic. It's the only one I have. Ronnie Spector. I could have thrown in Ronnie Spector too. That she just comes to my mind. Ronnie Spector, uh, what a talent. But there we go. Supremes, Ed Sullivan. I mean, they were just part of the soundtrack. Truly, uh, that was uh, going for people of my vintage uh, growing up. So we love the Supremes. Next up, well, it's got to be. Well, we're going to do this. We're going to do it this way. Jenny Lewis. This is the wonderful, wonderful Jenny Lewis. I am new to her. I've got about four or five of her albums. She doesn't have that many albums out. She was with uh, Rilo Kylie, a band called Rilo Kylie. Went off on her own, Jenny Lewis. Here she is with the Watson twins. This is called Rabbit, Rabbit Fur Coat. <laughs> what a great... Uh, shining, uh, reminiscent album cover. I mean, it's just a picture just doing it like this, and everybody goes, holy moly, that's a shining. And it's on this gorgeous uh, red vinyl. But uh, Jenny Lewis is really, uh, quickly became a favorite for me, and I was introduced to her music by Lisa Tedesco. Lisa has not been making videos lately, and I'm so sad uh, to see that uh, she's been in inactive. She's been inactive for a few months. But I'm a big Lisa Tedesco fan. She's been a big support to me and my channel. And um, she introduced Jenny Lewis. She gifted me, actually, uh, a Jenny Lewis CD. Uh, and that was my introduction. And then from there, I went and picked this one up. And um, Acid Tongue, uh, another uh, album from her. And um, I'm looking for Voyager. And I believe that uh, Steve Carlson, none other a personality, and Steve Carlson may just be sending that my way in the not too distant future. But here we are with Robert Furcoat, Jenny Lewis, and her videos are a lot of fun. A lot of personality in this lady. She's not very tall. And my friend Craig, Craig Vinyl Plethora. Craig is probably Jenny's biggest fan, uh, at least the biggest one I know. He has seen her 14 times in concert. Can you imagine? Uh, so I'm envious of that because uh, I would love to see her. But Jenny Lewis, really, really great, kind of a, a bit of a secret uh, treasure, newly arrived. And I also, Shim uh, Shatterick of the Muffs, I also love Kim. So many female artists that we could have discussed here. But uh, again, limited to 10, Glenn Calloway. He makes the rules. I got to follow him. Next up, I just bought her box set. This woman's work, I showed it on my, I think the last video I did, a prepared video. But here we've got Kate Bush, The Dreaming. And uh, this is uh, probably considered by many her greatest work, so creative. Uh, it's uh, She's got the Fairlight synthesizer working away, which she had introduced into her work. Uh, there's experimental sounds, uh, different melodies that she's working with. And uh, just wonderful. Now, of course, Kate is receiving a, a, a huge boost in popularity through Stranger Things uh, with her song Running Up That Hill Was Placed. But uh, you cannot go wrong with this album, The Dreaming. I believe it was 1985. I want to say 1985, but it may not be. But I'm looking desperately for the date on here. But with no luck. No luck. Anyway, The Dreaming. Kate Bush. Kate's so creative, so unique, and her um, her passion, she throws her whole uh, body into her work. She dances, she sings, uh, the, the movement that goes with the song. Uh, her, um, the song Massey and I Love, Norm Maslow and I, uh, we talk about this one always, is Wuthering Heights. That was my that was the thing, even though it wasn't the song that got me into her, it was actually Cloud Busting, the one with uh, Donald Sutherland back in the 80s. Um, that video went viral and it, it went everywhere, probably because in Canada, probably because of Donald Sutherland, Canadian actor, famous through MASH and so many other films that are familiar to people. But he co-starred with Kate, kind of as a, a, her father, I believe he plays her father in the piece. And 
uh, he's uh, a scientist working on uh, busting, I guess, the clouds and creating weather and uh, or generating weather, controlling it. And it's a great video. It's creative. It's unique, just like Kate herself. Such a fan. And uh, I paid a pretty premium dollar to get the women's work box set in my collection. That's one I wanted. And I've got the majority of her discography on vinyl as well in the collection. But I thought I would take advantage of this video to show my copy, Canadian First Press, of... Uh, the Dreaming. Wonderful. Wonderful, Kate. Okay. By the way, if you're wondering what's going on here, uh, she's playing Houdini. This is, uh, you know, she got uh, the Houdini stand-in. she got a key there. So the idea is she gives him a kiss and then passes the uh, key to him. Uh, that uh, motif uh, reappears within the album itself in a lyric. So there is um, the wonderful, the inimitable, the unequaled Kate Bush. So that leaves us with number 10. Who's going to be my number one? And remarkably... Criminally, I have one lonely CD, a greatest hits of this artist, but I think she's one of my favorites. I loved her in the 60s as a little kid, grew up with her, you know, again, Ed Sullivan, uh, she was a mainstay. It's the unequal Dusty Springfield. Sorry for the glare on this video, on this uh, CD, but yes, Dusty Springfield. Yeah, so many great hits. Silver Threads and Gold Needles. Of course, that's been covered by everybody. I Only Want to Be With You is one of her great uh, songs. Wishing and Hoping. I Just Don't Know What to Do With Myself. The White Stripes covered that. Um, you Don't Have to Say You Love Me. One of the greatest of all time. Um, the Look of Love, of course, the Burt Bacharach composition that appeared in Casino Royale. But uh, yeah, it was in Casino Royale trying to talk to myself. I always get Casino Royale and What's the New Pussycat kind of mixed up. There were two Mad Cat 60s comedies occurring at the same time. Folks, this is my top 10 female artists, at least for now. The only one that doesn't change is Dusty Springfield. My loyalty goes to Dusty for so long. I've loved her for so long. Uh, I want to get Dusty in Memphis. Isn't that a classic? I don't have it. I need to get it. Folks, once again, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. And uh, we'll see you in the daily live stream, 6 o'clock Pacific, daily. I'm in for at least two hours to talk with the waxed and uh, the, the many friendly souls in the vinyl community. Bye for now.